Okay, bonjour, year eight and year nine. This is um, today's lesson about Christmas and Noël en France. And um, I hope you're having a good couple of days before Christmas. And with today's objective is we're going to learn a little bit about Christmas in France. You should try and pause the video during the next few minutes. And any letters, any words that you see in green, you should write down because they're going to come up later on. They're an important important parts of the lesson and at the end we've got a few little activities for you to do including a little song and a worksheet for you to finish off after you've had a look at this so we'll talk about christmas in france today which is not the same as christmas in england there are a few different things so let's move so first of all obviously the 25th of december is a public holiday in france just like it is in britain but there's no such thing as boxing day in france it's an English tradition, an English holiday, not a French tradition, where they open the boxes at church and they give things to the poor on Boxing Day. That's where the word Boxing Day comes from. So in France, everyone goes back to work because it's not a holiday. There's only one day of a holiday in France. And actually, you'll find in a minute that Christmas Day, the 25th of December, is not actually the important day in France. So that's slightly different. Go back to work straight away. And obviously, Saint, Nic Saint Nicolas, so Saint Nicholas or Le Père Noël, was the original, was thought to be the original Father Christmas. So we should pause it and write Père Noël down. That means Father Christmas or Santa. And he is traditionally he was thought to be Saint Nicholas who brought the presents to the children. And that's a, as you can see there, Saint Nicholas looks quite familiar to us from that picture. Um, and you can see, if you look at Santa Claus, Le Père Noël, Father Christmas, then he has some similar characteristics to St. Nicholas. So if you look carefully, you can see the difference. Obviously, you've got um, a long white beard, just like St. Nicholas. And you've got the bishop's mitre, which is Santa's hat. And you've also got a red coat. So a lot of, a lot of people feel that Santa Claus, or Father Christmas, St. Nicholas, is named after St. Nicholas always based on him okay father christmas and the pen pen the well also travels around with a guy called Père futar and Père futar or father spanker is his known no sniggering please he comes around with santa claus and with Père noel and he tells him how each child has behaved during the year and good children receive presents and naughty children don't get any gifts at all and in some parts of france Père noel even brings small gifts on christmas on saint nicholas's eve as well which is december the 6th and he also comes back and visits again on christmas eve so they get two goes now decorations in france are quite traditional a lot of decorations that we own the things we think of in england are actually based in certain areas of france so, for example, the Christmas tree, the Sapin de Noël, is one of the most important decorations. And it was, you'll see it in homes and streets and in shops and things. But the, the trees in the streets are not, are real. They're not plastic ones. And this tradition comes from this an area of France called Alsace, which is in the north, northwest, no, excuse me, northeast of France, near the German border. And that's where the Christmas tree originated from back in the 14th century. Christmas cards as well are also thought to come from this area. So a lot of traditions come from the north northwest northeastern part of France. Excuse me. Also at Christmas, there'll be a, a wreath hung on the door, which says "Soyez la bienvenue chez nous." Welcome to our house. Soyez la bienvenue chez nous. And originally, this was an Anglo-Saxon tradition, actually, which was later adopted by the French. So you might have a Christmas wreath on your door as well at home. And in France, they do that too. It looks a bit like that, perhaps. It's called la couronne de bienvenue, the Christmas wreath. And that's how you pronounce it in French, la, cou la couronne de bienvenue. Okay, the hot, um, in the past, the Christmas wreath had four 
candles, which represented the four weeks before Christmas, which is obviously called Advent. And each Sunday, one of the candles was lit as a countdown to the special day. The crown is often decorated with holly, le hou, which you can see there is holly. And the spiky leaves represent the passion of Christ, and the red berry is the blood of Christ. So it's a religious, quite a religious thing. So the, the holly, le hou, is important because of the way it helps the Holy Family during the Nativity as well. So in order to escape from King Herod's massacre of the infants, Mary and Joseph left for Egypt with the baby Jesus. On the way, the holy trees, sorry, the holy trees, excuse me, spread out their spiky branches to protect and hide them. And as a reward for that, Mary declared that it would remain evergreen and as a symbol of immortality. And tradition also says that in order to have a prosperous year, you have to have holly in your house at Christmas. So that's where the holly comes from, le hou. Another plant, another thing we see at Christmas is le gui, which is the mistletoe, mistletoe le gui. And the history of the mistletoe is um, the plant has a, is a long history. It was, it was from the ancient Druids who considered it sacred because of its miraculous properties in healing and protection against all sorts of evils and witchcraft. So mistletoe has a long history of being used uh, and as decoration as well. And at Christmas time and in New Year, uh, mistletoe is, is suspended from the ceiling or from a door and it's a tradition to kiss under the mistletoe as a symbol of prosperity and of long life. So again, that's similar to perhaps something we might do in, in Britain. Le Hou is the mistletoe. Now, La Vieille de Noël, this is the important day in France, really, the, on Christmas Eve, La Vieille de Noël, which is where the bells of the church and the cathedrals, they ring to call people to mass at midnight, and then people go to church in quite large numbers. I think perhaps larger numbers than they do in England at the moment. And, obviously, and also that's when they have their Christmas meal as well on Christmas Eve and open some presents. We also have... Advent, le calendrier de l'Avent, is Advent, which is a period of four weeks before the birth of Christ. With the Advent calendar, you can count down the days before Christmas, and behind each window or door, there are pictures or little chocolates or lollies. So again, we have that in England. That's how you say it in French, le calendrier de l'Avent. And as I've just said, Christmas Eve is a quite an important day in France. French children don't just leave out socks, they may also leave out their shoes by the fireplace to be filled with gifts from Père Noël. So little things like fruit and that can, can and little treats can fit into a shoe or, or a sock. Okay, and on the day of Noël, on Christmas Day, Le Jour de Noël, in the morning, they will also find sweets and fruit and nuts and small toys that have been left by Santa. In other places, Le Petit Jésus, is the one that brings the gift. Adults have no gifts at Christmas, but wait until New Year's Day to exchange presents. So the Jour de Noël. Okay, let's have a little bit of a, a look at Santa's reindeer. So in French, these are the names of Santa's reindeer on the on the left hand side, and we've got a few extra words at the bottom. Le traîneau is the word for a sledge, and une reine is a reindeer. And I want you to see if you can work out what the names of the reindeer are. So we should pause it here and see if we can work out which one's which. Hopefully you know them in English. Maybe you can Google it and see what they're called in English first and see if you can match them up. So you should pause it now and see if you can match those up. So the first one we've got Fougeux is the word is Dasher. Danseur is obviously Dancer. I hope you got that one right. Frignon is Prancer and Megère is Vixen. Comet is Comet. Cupidon is Cupid. And then the bottom ones, Tonnerre and Eclair, we might know by the German word Donner, which is Thunder in English, and Blitzen, which is Lightning. So Tonnerre and Eclair, Thunder and Lightning, Donner and Blitzen. So those are the names of the Santa's reindeer. Dasher, Dancer, Prancer, Vixen, Comet, Cupid, Donner and Blitzen. Hopefully you got that right. If you paused it, let's move on. We've also got a, like, like la crèche in France. They have a tradition of having a, a crèche in, in a house. 
and it was St. Francis of Assisi who made the first crib, the first crash. This was in a cave in, in Greco in Italy during Christmas of 1223, so an awful long time ago. And the tradition of having a crib at Christmas became very common in Italy and France. So it's not really a thing we... I don't, I don't do that in my house, so it's not really a thing we do in England. But in France they have a crash. And many French homes have a crib or crash at Christmas time. And they also be seen in shops and town centres and churches. So it looks something like that, perhaps. I've seen some of them in England, but not too many. So I've got these little characters that are called Santon. So Santon are little figures that make the crib more like real life in a village. The characters are traditional, and you can see them mostly in the south of France. Rather than elsewhere. Now we get to Le Réveillon, which is the big meal the, or Chris, the big Christmas meal on Christmas Eve so on Christmas Eve when people have finished buying their last minute purchases the streets become deserted it's time for le réveillon or the special Christmas meal all the family eat together at this time so whereas we I would normally do that on Christmas Day in France they normally do it on Christmas Eve le réveillon and people traditionally have seafood such as oysters and they have roast turkey and they also have une bouche de noël which we'll see in a minute. So, for example, it starts off, le repas is the word for a meal. And there are quite a few different courses, many more courses, I think, than in England. I think food is one of the focuses of Christmas in France, much more so than in England, even. And the meal has quite a few courses. Each course has its own wine to accompany it, so they have a special wine for each course for different ones. So, le repas is the word for the meal. But be careful. Attention! Beware, if you're ever invited to a meal like this in France on Christmas Day, you need to be careful not to eat too much to start with, because you may not be able to finish it. Especially if you're in the south of France, in a place called Provence, where there are 13 different desserts to finish off. I'll have a look at them in a minute. So, we'll start off. So, the start of the meal, the meal, the menu de Noël, is starts off in France with some nibbles, some things to get you started. So there's some canapé. These are les canapé. And they're little pieces of toasted bread which have delicacies on them. So you can see things like um, caviar looks like there and salmon we've got on top of these bits of toasted bread. So that's les, can les canapé. Also as a little nibble you can have les vol au vent. You might have seen vol au vents in England. So they're little pastry shells the word vol au means to, mean to do with wind or it's lightly touched, so it's like full of air. And they contain a variety of tasty fillings. So some cheese maybe and tomato there and things like that. Les vol au vent. And another little nibble are les crudités. Les crudités. Which are little pieces of raw vegetables such as carrot, celery, green peppers. And you could dip them into some sauces, maybe some hummus and things like that. And that's something else you might have in France to start you off. Then the adults would move on to an apéritif. So an apéritif is often a champagne which is served before a before dinner drink. So before you start eating properly, you would have an apéritif. And there are other types of apéritif. You can have um, a cœur, which is the one on the left, which is a champagne with a black currant liqueur in it called cassis, and um, there's also in the middle there whiskey you could possibly have, or a pernot, which is on the right hand side, which is a French drink. And if you add water to pernot, you can, you can make it into a long drink. And when you do that, it becomes cloudy, like you can see in the picture there. So those are some other apéritifs you can have, some alcoholic drinks. So not for you, but when you get a bit older, you could perhaps experiment with some of these at a French Christmas in your house. Then we get to the starter. L'entrée is the word for a starter. And one of those is a pâté de foie gras, which is a goose liver pâté. A pâté de foie gras. And this is very expensive, foie gras. And you can only usually eat a, lot, a little bit of it because it's very rich. Um, and sometimes there's truffle as well, which you have for decoration. So a foie gras. So we've only not even got started really yet, and we're already on to quite a few courses. Then we move on. To les fruits de mer. So les fruits de mer. Again, we have. I don't know if you have this in England, but sometimes you might have a 
a prawn cocktail in England, but in France they have quite a lot of seafood, le fruit de mer. So seafood, for example, you might have something called prawns, like les crevettes in French. Les crevettes are prawns you might have. You might have les crabes, which is some crab meat. You might have uh, les langoustines, which are crayfish. And you may also have les truites, which is trout. So lots of different types of fish. I think more than we have in England, different types of fish. And then we get on to le plat principal, so the main course in France. The main dish, which is la dinde, which is turkey, just like in England. So this sometimes comes, this comes with vegetables and it's served with a nice sauce. And you also might have la salade, so a green salad. So after this is the salad, so it's, it cleans the taste of the other food from your mouth. And so it's also a little rest between courses. So it's just a little break where you have a little salad and your palate becomes a bit cleaner so you can move on to other things afterwards. So that's le plat principal, la dinde et la salade. Okay, la dinde, so for, obviously we know what turkey and salad looks like. La dinde et la salade. Okay, next, we go on to the cheese course. You wouldn't be France without having a cheese course. So le fromage is the cheese. And there are some very famous cheeses in France, such as camembert, brie, and gruyere. Um, and you would eat the cheese with bread and drink red wine if you're an adult. So you have a cheese course, which might not appeal to you at the moment, but it's ten, it's very nice if you're grown up. You tend to like a bit of cheese afterwards. So I don't know how many courses we're up to now, but we've gone through quite a bit already. So you need got quite a lot to eat on Christmas and Christmas in France. And then we're on to the desserts. Have you still got some room? So we're moving on to dessert. Les fruits to start us off. So during winter, most fruit is imported from warmer climates. And um, at Christmas, they try and find something really special. So you might have some fruit. And then perhaps even better desserts, we've got le bou la bouche de Noël. So la bouche de Noël is what we might call a Christmas log, a chocolate Christmas log. And again, there's another example of one. And la bouche de Noël is a special cake for Christmas. It's a sponge cake which is rolled and shaped like a log and inside it there is often a creamy filling and then it is covered in chocolate. So you can see the cream at the end there and it's covered in chocolate and that looks really tasty. So uh, la bouche de Noël is what you would have in Christmas at Christmas in France. And then we move on to a coffee because we have to have coffee in France to finish off. So to finish, everyone will have a cup of coffee. Une tasse de café. Le café is for coffee. Une tasse de café. Which, and also a very special champagne. And there might also be some petit four, which are um, little biscuits to eat as well. Obviously, you can see there, French coffee is usually quite small, but usually quite strong as well. Le café to finish off. And then, so there's a petit four, a little biscuit. A, bit of cake, a little cake, a biscuit. And then we move on to some digest, digestif, digestif, so a little drink. To sometimes, so sometimes people like to drink a, a drink after their meal, which is a strong alcoholic drink served in a tiny glass. Digestifs are made from grapes and any fruit and are often called eau de vie, which means water of life. There's even eau de vie de sapin, so there's also a, a Christmas tree liqueur as well. So that's something else you might have when you're an adult. Um, and then the final bit, which we talked about earlier, are les 13 desserts de Provence. So there's 13 desserts in a certain area of France, which is in the south of France, called Provence. And they have 13 desserts down there. Only little ones, perhaps, but there are 13 desserts. Les 13 desserts de Provence. So, for example, we start off, the reason there's 13 is because of the tradition of the 12, the 12 apostles... Jesus' 12 apostles and him himself, and Jesus himself, and that's why they have 13. So it's a religious meaning for 13 desserts, 13 desserts. So the first four desserts are traditionally for religious orders, so the monks and nuns who beg for their food. So the al almonds are for the Carmelites, figs for the Franciscans, um, raisins are for the Dominicans, and walnuts for the Augustine. So that's four to start us off. Like I said, they're not massive big desserts, but they're just little things. And then we've got four dishes of fresh fruit, 
apples, pears, oranges, and melons. So that's another four. So that's eight. And then we finish off with a few more. We're nearly there. So black nougat and white nougat. And um, we have Quincy jam candies. And then a savoury bed of fugas, which is filled with sun-dried tomatoes or anchovy paste and olive oil and garlic. And then also, finally, some dates. So these are, they're not amazing desserts like chocolate, but they're, these are the desserts you might have in the south of France, in Provence. Okay, so it looks perhaps a bit like that. Those sorts of things. Okay, super. So I had a lot of talking. Now is the time for us to do, you to do a little bit of work. So there's a couple of worksheets that we've, you should see attached to this. They're also on Frog as well on the Christmas lesson in half term two. But we'll attach it to an email as well or maybe onto Frog. So this is the first worksheet is a memory skills worksheet with um, French vocabulary. You have to fill in the gap. So you should be able to use the words in the text on, on the sheet as well. And there's also extra support because we've you should have some green words as well that we've been talking about during this lesson. So there's a vocab sheet provided. There's also an extra sheet, which is um, a word search. So you have to translate the words into English and then you have to look them up as well on the word search. And again, the green words that we've got in this, power, in this video are the ones you need to focus on. So um, you might need to go back and look at the video again if you didn't write them down. And there's also, which we'll attach to this, which is a little video on YouTube, which is a song, which we'd like you to have a look at and sing along, a traditional Christmas song. Okay, so thank you for listening. Joyeux Noël, Merry Christmas. Hope we have a really good break for the next couple of weeks. And then a bonne année, and we'll see you in janvier. We'll see you next year. So Joyeux Noël et bonne année. Merci, au revoir.